everybody today. What are your feelings? I think there's a lot of good stuff. I think it's um, I think it's an interesting part of the the, um, the whole judging because instead of just talking, instead of showing your work or letting your work speak for itself, there's a presentation involved, which I understand is really important in fashion to be able to speak um, accurately about your your design and your inspiration. But I, I, I saw a lot of stuff that I really liked today. Which, which are your favorites? One, one shouldn't be allowed to speak about that before the judging's over. <laughs> Well, I'll say a couple favorites. No, I think the, I think a lot of I love the stuff. I love different stuff that, and I loved a lot of the men's the menswear stuff was really impressive today. I thought, and the um, the detail on things and the inspiration that it came from. So I, I feel odd about talking about who I liked versus who I didn't like because I I liked everybody, but I, I don't want to play favorites. Okay, point. true diplomat, Jefferson. How about you? So I'm the Ear Festival Virgin. This is the first time I've been to the magnificent Villa Noir. Uh, no way. Okay, see, my French is terrible. Villa No Way. And it's a really beautiful spot to be judging. Um, and yeah, we, so we spent the morning, we had like uh, the 10 presentations from the 10 young designers that were showing. And the standard was really high. Um, I didn't love everything, but everyone had something to say, and there was elements that were strong about everything. Um, maybe not all of them are going to have careers as fashion designers, but all of them are strong enough to be working in some aspect of the fashion industry. Um, there were a couple of standouts for me, um, particularly. Um, Talking to my breast. Yeah. I particularly <laughs> like um, this kind of groovy young Latvian couple who um, showed both men's and women's wear together. Most people were specializing in doing one or the other, and they had this uh, sort of um, point of view about fashion that sort of transcended, okay. transcended uh, uh, gender. Um, but I've never been to Latvia, so I have this sort of romantic idea of the Riga scene and how kind of tough it must be to get uh, things going there on an artistic, avant-garde, creative level. And, uh, and I was impressed with the way that they managed to pull that uh, collection together and for it to be of such quality and... Uh, and the story behind it was amazing, or yeah. what they projected. Yeah, the film noir uh, characters that they had for each one was, was a strong way of putting the ideas across. So yeah, that was good. There was, there was a few other standout bits, pieces too, but it's hard to remember everyone's names. You know, this is the thing. You can describe I, I, the clothes and I'll feed you the you know, name. There was a, um, the, the, the boys, I think Simone Philippe or Philippe Simone. The Boy Scouts? The Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the boy who never grew up, the, the kind of the very. Uh, a lot of people were playing on this idea of childhood. I found that as a little bit of a theme going on. People, people quite innocent, wanting to project a sense of innocence with their clothing rather than. A, you see in the collections this season there was a lot of sex, there was a lot of um, designers in the women's collections and the men's collections playing with very fetishistic, very sexual, very um, amped up feelings and, and these students were trying to maybe react against that or trying to find a sense of purity or innocence or escapism. Um, well there was a little theme there but um, yeah, he was a... He was uh, uh, very, he had a very sweet poetic um, uh, thing about his work, but it's just incredibly well made. Again, I think it was Anne's work graduate. Um, sleeping bags, underwear, the whole thing, you know, like uh, every element, outerwear, and really strong knitwear. I mean, his knitwear, the cable knits, and the, uh, the, the way they graduated, very incredibly thin knits, and then very chunky, all in one, body tight kind of uh, jumpers. His knitwear was exceptional, actually. And, you know, if he doesn't go on to be necessarily a designer in his own right, he could be a very strong knitwear or accessories designer for, for a label or something. So these kids are like, they've got the kids, but then these young designers have got, have got really good ideas. There was this one girl who did, um, 
the girl who did the women's <laughs> menswear. The German girl? Yeah. Alice. Okay. And, um, it's great. You know, with the, the garters. The oh, yeah, and the poem inside of the... Oh, that, was, that was another Alice, one. yeah. The, um, there, was two that did, there was two women that did menswear, which was quite interesting as well. And it has a female point of view. But, yeah, one was that the, she was going to the moon. She had this concept oh, yeah, that of, like, was so far... So far, which is a really, really cool mm -hmm. idea of like how far can you go so far, you know, it, As far as, yeah, but she used her initial, she had a good logo. I mean, there's so many different parts, I think, to, I mean, it's not just about the clothes, but it's totally about the inspiration and what you can... I mean, I don't know, I'm not a designer, so... right? It's so much about all these, all these incredible little details, like waistcoats that button up this way, mm -hmm. and buckles, and... Shirts that have multiple buttons and things but that do things. And so she just amped that, didn't she? She went kind of nuts for it. And it was like, it was amazing checks going on in her collection that I loved, incredible color palette, um, but almost too many ideas. And you, you obviously, it's a small, it's a nine piece collection. So it's good to see that because you know that when it becomes a 30 piece collection, it'll kind of simmer into something more mellow, but it's ferociously full of ideas. It's nice, it's good to see you. Great. Thanks. Perfect.